It's time for City Beat, your source for all the latest news on the city of Thompson, only on 610 CHTN. Hello and welcome to City Beat. I'm your host, Jared Schneider, and joining me today is Deputy Mayor Aaron Hogan. Good morning. Good morning, Jared. And thanks for joining me today. And before we get into any of the questions today, I'll give you, first of all, the first minute to run things down from the past week. Well, you know what? The past week has been really interesting. And I and I like to t- think of the fall. The fall usually really um, excites me because it's this time where things get started again and things kick off. And the past week has been really interesting. With last week, I was in St. John's, Newfoundland, attending a Federation of Canadian Municipalities board meeting, um, where I said as a, a board member, just discussing the ways that municipalities can lobby the federal government in terms of supporting um, our particular needs locally. And today we had uh, the Premier in town, and so we met um, this morning with uh, with Premier Selinger to discuss just how the province is, is supporting um, the City of Thompson and residents in the City of Thompson. And then we have, uh, with the fall, we have a number of our committees and just getting down to work starting off in the fall. And so it's been this really interesting intersection of how the, fed- uh, the federal government, the provincial government, and the city are coming together to, to um, initiate new programs and to get really uh, involved in, in our work work uh, now that the fall has started and we're all ready to just get our hands dirty. 204-677-8181. Today we have Deputy Mayor Aaron Hogan taking your calls and we'll try to answer them as best as possible. 204-677-8181. Now you mentioned you were all the way in Newfoundland for an FCM uh, a board meeting. Now maybe talk to us a little bit about that and what were some of the things that go on there? As I know it's, uh, it's they're, they're pretty big and they're pretty cool things. Well, you know, one of the um, biggest advocacy positions that the Federation of Canadian Municipalities has been taking for the past year is to really stress the need for infrastructure investment in municipalities. And this has been the case across the board, um, is particularly when we talk about the infrastructure deficit. And the strength of, of the advocacy position that FCM has taken has really showed itself in the federal budget of 2013 where the, where the um, federal government dedicated funds, the Build Canada Fund, towards infrastructure in municipalities. And so this is really showcases the strength of the lobbying of the organization. Uh, looking forward to 2014, the next position that the FCM is going to be taking is in relation to housing and how we get the federal government to commit and recommit past, um, past dollars towards housing and especially affordable housing in municipalities. And now 204-677-8181 taking your calls. And you mentioned uh, some of the things that they're going to be looking forward to doing in 2014. I know that you guys meet every so often. Um, what are some of the things that we might even see? I mean, you know, as it is across the whole country, what are some of the things that we might see from some of these meetings and then moving forward into some of the housing things that you mentioned? Well, I think that some of some of the things that we, um, the city of Thompson has really showed locally, that we are leaders in a lot of ways, in a lot of respects, especially in terms of... Um, we, we've been out with our Aboriginal court, and one of the committees that I sit on is social economic development, and so we've uh, started an Aboriginal relations working group um, to really share best case, best practices across the across the country. And the Thompson Aboriginal Court is actually a really innovative um, mechanism to build partnerships and to build community, and it's being looked at by, by uh, cities such as Toronto and Calgary and Edmonton, and I think that that just goes to show that the city of Thompson really has a lot, um, a lot to say and a very strong voice at that federal table in terms of best cases, uh, best case examples. 204-677-8181. Now, you mentioned off the top, Premier Greg Selinger is in town today, and you met with him this morning. Um, do you know what are some of the things that he'll be doing here in town, and what are some of the things that uh, they'll be looking at? Well, that's right. We um, met this, this morning with Premier Selinger, and he... Uh, he enjoys coming to Thompson and coming to see uh, to to see the things that we have going on. We are a very progressive city. We have a lot of innovative um, uh, innovative strategies in place, and he's come here specifically to uh, to showcase education and training and to make commitments and investments in education and training um, in Thompson and around uh, Thompson. And so that that's a very important investment. Education and training is actually one of the the strategies in the Thompson Economic um, Diversification Plan. And so we're pleased to see the province committee to that. We also had discussions about uh, Valet's long-term sustainability, particularly in terms of long uh, Valet's um, long-term sustainability for Valet's operations. And so there's a commitment from the province to be at the table for that. And we also talked about um, the cadet program that's been, a, that's been a hot topic lately. And um, Premier Selinger reconfirmed a commitment from the province to move forward on the cadet pro- program for Thompson. So that was positive to hear. 204-677-8181. Now, you mentioned the cadet program. I know that's something Thompson's really been pushing for from the government over the past uh, little while or so. And I know this is probably a better question for for Premier Selinger or Mayor Tim Johnston. But um, do you know where things kind of are with that? And if that is something that we could still see here in the future in the next little while? 
I think that that's something that we can expect to see in Thompson in the next little while. The, of course, the, the, the challenge is always making sure that you get all your ducks in a row and, and, you get, um, and you get the right processes enacted and in place. And so that's what we're working on right now. So there's a, com a commitment from both sides of the table to keep on, to keep on working at that and, and, and um, working out how we actually implement it. And so I, I think that we could expect to see that um, in the next little while for sure. 204-677-8181. Now I know we were talking before you wanted to talk a little bit about the Terry Fox walk and run. I know it's uh, going on here this Sunday here in Thompson. You mentioned that you also got to see a, a bit of a monument of the Terry Fox out, out in Newfoundland when you were out there? Well, you know, when I was out in, in St. John's, I had the opportunity to go and see the Mile Zero uh, monument for the Terry Fox Run um, that was that was uh, put up by the city. And it really is an imp impressive monument when you think about the, the, the dreams that were inspired by this, this act that Terry Fox um, that Terry Fox undertook, and just for that starting point, just just knowing where it all began, um, it was really impressive. And the monument has this quote on it, uh, and it says, "I, I." And these are words from a quote from Terry Fox. I just wish people would realize that anything is possible if you try. Dreams are made if you try. And I think that that's so relevant, and it, it just speaks so deep about that. Especially in Thompson, I mean, we can we can do a lot of things, and we can see a lot of positive come together in our community if we're just willing to to get our hands dirty and, and get down and do the work. And and we've seen a lot of that already. 204-677-8181, taking your calls. And I know, while well, sticking with Thompson, I know you're part of a lot of committees here in Thompson, and you were mentioning before about some of them that are going to be starting up here again in the fall. Well, the thing is that councils, um, the standing committees of council uh, start up a, start up after taking a summer break. Well, so not all the committees break for the summer, but some of them do. And so it's really, it's again, you know, when you go back to school and you, you, you there's just this, this renewed sense of energy. Well, that's what we're going into uh, now with our committees. And so we have a number of committees that are, that are meeting, particularly public safety, um, infrastructure, recreation, um, that, are, that are kicking off uh, to look forward for the next year. And I know that uh, public safety in particular is going to be looking at um, the downtown strategy operations that took place over the summer and coming up with a real defined strategy on how we're going to act moving forward. Um, recreation has a number of initiatives that they're going to be working on, um, but I, at this point I'd just like to raise uh, that we have to remind uh, residents that we have the 11 past one concert happening on September 21st. And so we just want to make sure that uh, residents are aware of that and know that, that uh, they're coming to town where uh, there's a dance party that's also being hosted by DJ Finn S. So if you haven't picked up tickets yet, they're available at the Thompson, Re um, Thompson Regional Community Center so to go out and get them. But um, just in terms of the committees coming together, one of the other items that residents should be aware of is that in this fall, when the committee work starts to begin, that we're getting our um, our strategies and items in line for preparation of budget 2014. So if there are any um, notable items that residents really feel that council should be moving on in terms of the 2014 budget, I would, I would advise to contact your council members, contact members of council and share those ideas because we're always looking to, to hear from the community to see what's important there and, and what we, we should be prioritizing and committing our resources towards. 204-677-8181. Now, Communities in Bloom was back again once again this summer, and uh, the city here in Thompson did receive four to five blooms once again. Um, and I know you've always got a, a helping hand in that, so what's kind of the feeling like around the city after hearing the news of, of four to five blooms once again this year? Well, you know what? I think that four bloom designation is excellent. I'm very pleased to hear that, and I just want to send out my kudos to the committee. I know that they do a lot of work over the summer, and a lot of it is volunteer work, and, and they just do a fantastic job of hosting and showcasing our city and making sure that the judges that come in are aware of all of the things that we have going on. We've heard from the judges in the past that come through the city um, that have never been to Thompson or it's been years since they've been to Thompson and they are just blown away by the number of volunteer groups that we have working, um, the number of progressive initiatives that we are undertaking and so I think that a four bloom designation definitely validates that that progress um, that's been made and I know that we have a number of items uh, especially when UCN opens up and, and a number, number of McLean Park and a number of other other initiatives that next year we can really look to showcase and um, and plan for that fifth bloom. 204-677-8181. Now you mentioned the fifth bloom. I know that was kind of the goal of this year, uh, hopefully to get it next year, but what are some of the things that maybe we could do better and we'll try to do next year to reach the maximum goal of five out of five blooms? Well, I think that, that one of the biggest things that we can do is just get that community involvement, that resident buy-in. And I think over the past couple of years, we've really seen that, especially uh, since we initiated the program with the three blooms. And, and we've seen over the years that residents are really, they're really committed to it and they really want to work together to get to that fifth bloom. So I think that it's just a matter of pitching in and making sure that we have, um, we have our residential areas pitching in uh, in terms of uh, um, 
uh, dressing up their lawn and making sure that they're, they're t just taking pride in the area and also downtown, the business community, making sure that the business com community is prepared to just, just put out those little extras. You know, there's, there's so many things like planters and public art that can just, just add a little bit of sparkle that can really impress judges. And that will pretty much wrap up City Beat for this week. But before we go, I'll give you the final minute to wrap things up for the week ahead. Thanks, Jared. I just had one, well, I wanted to highlight one thing. Um, the city is going to be uh, putting out applications shortly for the next phase of the protege program. And if residents aren't aware, we, uh, we initiated the protege program last year, which is a mentorship program for young women where we pair up uh, young women between the ages of 16 and 28 with a, a fellow member of council so they can get an experience of municipal government, um, not only from the administrative side but with the committees and the meetings, but also what it is to be a politician. And, and it's a really eye-opening experience and we had a great, uh, a great experience with it last year. And we're going to be looking for residents in the community that are interested to apply and start up the second, uh, the second year, the next phase of Protégé. And we're really excited to kick that off in, um, sometime later in the fall. And that will do it for City Beat this week. Make sure to tune in every Thursday at 1130 for more insight into your city and a chance to ask more questions. I would just like to thank Deputy Mayor Hogan for joining me today. And to everyone else, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. City Beat will be back next Thursday morning at 11.